In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to convert grams to moles. So the first thing you need to do is you need to identify the molar mass of carbon. So you got to take the periodic table and look for carbon. Carbon has an atomic number of 6 and an atomic mass of 12. So what you need to use is the larger of these two values. The atomic mass, which is 12 AMU, atomic mass units, is also the molar mass. It's 12 grams per mole. Now, what this means is that one mole of carbon atoms has a mass of 12 grams. This is your conversion factor. That's what you need in order to convert from grams to moles. So let's start with what we're given. That's 30 grams of carbon. Now, what unit should we put on the bottom here? Notice that we have grams of carbon on the top left. So we need grams of carbon on the bottom right. And the number that's in front of it is 12. So for every 12 grams of carbon, there's one mole of carbon. Now, you always want to set this up in such a way that the unit grams of carbon cancels. So here we need to divide. It's going to be 30 divided by 12, which is 2.5. So 30 grams of carbon is equivalent to 2.5 moles of carbon. That's how you can convert grams to moles. Number two, how many moles of calcium atoms are in 20 grams of calcium? So first, let's find the atomic mass of calcium. So if you look at the periodic table, you'll see that calcium has an atomic number of 20 and a mass number, or an average atomic mass, of 40.08. So this number here, that is the molar mass of calcium. And it's 40.08 grams per mole. So what that means is that one mole of calcium has a mass of 40.08 grams. So this is our conversion factor. So now let's start with what we're given, which is 20 grams of calcium. And since we have grams of calcium on the top left, we need to put it on a bottom right. So let's put 40.08 grams of calcium on the bottom right and one mole of calcium on top. So the unit grams of calcium will cancel. So it's going to be 20 divided by 40.08. And this is equal to 0.499 moles of calcium. So that's the answer for this problem. Number three, how many moles of silicon atoms are in 150 grams of silicon tetrafluoride? Now this problem involves a little bit more work. So let's begin. The first thing we need to do is find the molar mass of silicon tetrafluoride. So the chemical formula is SiF4. Tetra is associated with the number four. So this compound has one silicon atom and four fluorine atoms. According to the periodic table, the atomic mass of silicon is 28.09. And the average atomic mass of fluorine is about 19. 4 times 19 is 76. And 76 plus 28.09 is 104.09. So that's the molar mass. So one mole of silicon tetrafluoride has a mass of 104. 0 0.09 grams. Now let's start with 150 grams of silicon tetrafluoride. Now we need an extra conversion step because we need to change the substance from silicon tetrafluoride to simply silicon. So that's another way in which the problem is a little bit different. But let's convert it to moles. One mole of silicon tetrafluoride has a mass of 104.09 grams. Now 
Now, there's one silicon atom per compound. So for every mole of silicon tetrafluoride, there's one mole of silicon atoms. So the answer is not going to change in this example. But for other examples, it could be different. It's important for you to watch out for that step. So it's going to be 150 divided by 104.09. And the answer is 1.44 moles of silicon atoms. Here's another problem that's a little bit harder than the last one. There's a few extra steps involved. How many moles of fluorine atoms are in 320 grams of aluminum fluoride? So if you want to tackle this problem, feel free. So first, what is the chemical formula of aluminum fluoride? If you're thinking ALF, that is not the answer. What we have here is an ionic compound. The last example was a molecular compound. But for an ionic compound, we need to come up with a formula. We don't have a prefix that tells us if it's difluoride or trifluoride. So we got to use the charges. Aluminum has a positive 3 charge. Fluoride has a minus 1 charge. In order for this compound to be neutralized, one aluminum ion has to be paired up with three fluoride ions. So you can have charge balance. Or you could use the crisscross technique, where you can exchange the charges with subscripts and just reverse them. So this is going to be Al1F3. But if you have a 1 as a subscript, you don't need to write it. So the chemical formula for aluminum fluoride is simply AlF3. So now that we've finished that crucial step, now we can find the molar mass of AlF3. So we have one aluminum atom and three fluorine atoms. The atomic mass of aluminum is 26.98, and we know fluorine is 19. So 3 times 19, that's 57, plus 26.98. That's going to give us a molar mass of 83.98 grams per mole. So what this means is that one mole of aluminum fluoride has a mass of 83.98 grams of AlF3. So now let's get rid of this. And let's start with 320 grams of AlF3. Now let's convert it to moles. One mole of AlF3 has a mass of 83.98 grams. Now, we're not looking for moles of AlF3. We are looking for moles of fluorine atoms. So therefore, we need to convert from AlF3 to just F. we got to change the substance. Now, notice that there are three atoms per formula unit. So one mole of AlF3 contains three moles of fluorine atoms. We have a 1 to 3 ratio. So the answer is going to be 320 divided by 83.98 multiplied by 3. So that's going to give us a final answer of 11.43 moles of fluorine atoms. Number 5. How many moles of oxygen atoms are in 2.4 kilograms of calcium phosphate? Well, first... Just like before, we need to write the formula of calcium phosphate. Calcium is an alkaline earth metal found in group 2, so therefore it has a positive 2 charge. Phosphate is simply a polyatomic ion that you need to know the formula of. It's PO4 3 minus. You just got to commit that to memory. So to write the formula, it's going to be Ca3PO4 2. Now that we have the formula, we could find the molar mass. There are three calcium atoms, two phosphorus atoms, 
1 times 2 is 2. And there are 8 oxygen atoms. 4 times 2 is 8. So the molar mass of calcium, that's 40.08. The molar mass of phosphorus is 30.97. And the molar mass of oxygen is 16. So you could type this in exactly the way you see it in your calculator. And you should get a molar mass of 310.18 grams per mole. So now we can finish the remainder of the problem. So let's start with what we're given, which is 2.4 kilograms. Now before we can convert this to moles, we need to convert kilograms to grams. One kilogram is equal to a thousand grams. So let's put one kilogram on the bottom and a thousand grams on top. We want the unit of kilograms to cancel. Now let's convert grams to moles. There's 310.18 grams of calcium phosphate per one mole of Ca3PO42. That looks like a 9. Now, our goal is not to find the moles of calcium phosphate, but rather the moles of oxygen atoms. Now, notice that there are 8 oxygen atoms per formula unit. So we could say that one mole of calcium phosphate contains 8 moles of oxygen atoms. So now the unit grams cancel and the unit moles of calcium phosphate will cancel as well. So it's 2.4 times 1000 which is 2400 divided by 310.18 that gives us 7.737 and then multiply that by 8. So there are 61.9 moles of oxygen atoms and 2.4 kilograms of calcium phosphate. So now you know how to convert grams to moles, and you know how to solve variations of that type of problem as well. Thanks for watching.